Hello, Brother Dre. What's going on, Mike? Man, how you doing, man? It is another day, another win. Did we really win? Is the question. 35 points scored for the Panthers today. Um, beating a team in the likes of the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. How's it going, Dre? Yeah, man, it's going good. I'm glad that they, uh, they got the win, Mike. You know, you you don't sound but, excited, man. Uh, I mean, I actually am excited. The reason why I'm excited is because, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't like it when a team gives up on a season. You know, I mean, we can you know we can go to the past you know all day long, but at the end of the day, I'm just uh, I'm just I'm just glad that they actually got the win. It may it may have been a you know funky win, but it was a win nonetheless, Mike. You know I'll take Funky at this stage of the game. I'll take Funky for a win, please. Exactly. <laughs> We're talking football, in particular Prairie View A&M University football. It is the after party. 1876, the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince, along with that man, Dre, Andre Davis. He is the future. I am the past. He's a young lad, about to graduate here in December. And first of all, congratulations about that, Dre. Um, I know your family's excited, and uh, you are too excited about getting ready to get that sheepskin that will make you part of the alumni family. So congratulations on that. Man. I appreciate it, Mike. No, I appreciate it. You know, I'm just glad to be a part of the uh, alumni family, You know, just rich tradition uh, at Prairie View. The rich tradition that goes beyond the ex- well, before we get into that, let's go over uh, the scores in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. We do have a final, Grambling 24, Alabama State 7. That game is now in the books. All coin show absolutely no mercy to Mississippi Valley, winning by the score of 59-0. to zero. Another game is going to be um, – the late kickoff, but let me give you Jackson State. Jackson State 10, Alabama A&M 7. And you're going to have Southern, who's in town against Texas Southern. Uh, that game will be kicking off momentarily. Just really got on the way. They'll be getting that. And, of course, Prairie View victorious over the um, uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions by the score of 35-12. In fact, the update now, Southern is on top of Texas Southern must score seven zero in the first quarter play. Dre, um, I'm not going to talk a whole bunch of stats in this that today. We know Prairie you got the win. They have two games remaining. You have um, uh, Texas Southern on the 25th, and you have a Thursday night game in Cornet Word. Now, in Cornet Word is ha- having an extremely down year. Uh, this is a four-year school out of San Antonio. They're in the Southland Conference. Um, really just got football in their program not long ago. They involved with Houston Baptist. And I'm not putting a lot of stock into this game, but I am putting stock into this game, if that makes any sense. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying on that one, Gary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand, Mike. You know, I, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there was a penalty or stat that stood out. There were 31 penalties in today's game, Trey. I thought you weren't doing stats, Mike. <laughs> I'm not doing. I'm not doing stat stats. But 31 penalties, Dre. 19 penalties in the first half. Right. 31 yeah. penalties. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, and I know on paper, you know, that that doesn't look good at all. You know, it doesn't look good at all. But it just goes to show you that a team like APB, you know, is a team, at least in my opinion, that, you know, that you can get away with that with. 31. I just want you to think about that. There's a lot. There's a lot. A lot of penalties. It's a, it's a lot of mistakes. And, and ultimately, you would look at that, just that number alone, and you would say that that team uh, did not win that game, or that team did not at least come close to winning that game. Well, and we see here that that's that that's that that's what the case. Well, no, no, 
Out of the other 31, Fairview was responsible for 20 of those penalties. Now, here's what I'm, what I'm saying, and I have the luxuries and the pleasures of uh, you know, witnessing a game uh, in the company of two uh, SWAC officials of, uh, of officiating, and that's uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Harold Mitchell, who is the head, and then his assistant, Brother Woods. And there were quite a few other penalties that could have been called. And now, I don't say anything. It's a working area. You're not supposed to say much. But all in my mind, I said, man, this is a really, really ugly game. This is an ugly game. And it looked like two teams that were struggling to find an identity today. That's what I saw. Hmm. That's a um. That's an interesting takeaway, Mike. You know, it really is. And honestly, one could really make that argument. Um, as far as what you just said, you know, because both teams, at least in my opinion, even though we had the better record, but I can uh, I would honestly make the argument that both teams actually did struggle this year, uh, leading up to this game. So in terms of both teams, you know, really trying to find their uh, identity, you know, honestly, that would make sense. You know, just mm-hmm. if you analyze how well both of these teams have played, at least up to this point. Well, I, I kept looking, and I'm like, it's like these guys are just like walking in place. I mean, there, there were, you know, Broach, I mean, not Broach, but McCray had a pretty uh, strong game. Uh, running wise, uh, a couple of big plays uh, by Cadell Hodge, uh, eighty plus yard for touchdown reception. You know, run after catch as you all kind of like the yak, <laughs> you know. But it, I, I'm like, man, it, this was it was rough. It was rough, and, and I'm going like, I am, I am, Mr. Positive when it comes to to my career. You know? I'm looking for the right looking for the light, looking for the optimism where I can say I can spin this into something good. And the, the only good other than, of course, the win, obvious, there was a young man uh, working in the press box area who attend, attended Grammar, okay? And uh, he was, you know, you know, we young. You, don't, you only know what you know. You only know what you know. And, you know, he's popping off. You know about yeah we just we just beating everybody beating everybody. I said, young man, I said let me let me help you out let me help you out. I said number one, uh, let me thank you because uh, Louisiana is so great, but let me thank you uh, for you working here in Texas now, and it was part of your tax dollars that helped pay for our beautiful stadium. Let me first thank you about that. <laughs> I said, but. Let me remind you about something that will forever follow you and tank your legacy. You guys quit. You refused to play Jackson State. You didn't even give them the decency and the courtesy to let them know you weren't going to show up. You just quit. And no matter what you do, no matter how you say it, there will always be an asterisk by your name. I said, even when the 0 and 80 streak hit and all the adversity that we dealt with at Prairie View, we never quit. Never quit. And I said all that to say, to me, I saw a bunch of guys just going through the day. Even today? Hmm. Really? Even Today, I didn't see pride. I didn't see purpose. We showed up, put on the uniforms because we knew we had to play this game. But what was the pride? What was the purpose? Well, and then that's that's the honesty. That's the key word right there, Mike. You know, purpose. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me at this point, you know, with the players knowing that um, as far as their purpose in terms of SWAC championship is pretty much, you know, over in terms of the teams that they have lost. You know, I, 
I understand that at one point in time, you know, players they want to they look for something to actually play towards, you know, and ultimately in this case, it would be the Swag Tournament, and they know in advance the teams that they have to beat in order to actually get to that point. So now, even though I'm sure, as we talked last week, in terms of the leaders and the coaches letting the, uh, letting the players know that hey, we still got three games left. Let's go out there. Let's play with some pride and let's play with some purpose. Yes, you think that in your head. And even leading up to the game, but in terms of when the game actually gets there, it still hit, it, it hits you all at once, Mike. You know, like okay, like even though I know I gotta play with pride, I gotta play with purpose, but even though I know at the end of this game, even at the next of the two, these next two games, this is it. There's nothing else left for us. Great. That sounded nice. I really did, and I applaud you for trying but I will not buy that. Let me explain something, Dre. And it's no secret. And it's not hating. It's just stating the facts. Fair review, in recent times, have not won a bunch of championships. Still play for pride and purpose. It's not like within the last 20 years We've won 10 titles. And I like that in the last 10 years, we've won five titles. Am I making any sense? Oh, absolutely. I understand. Okay. But you play for pride and purpose. If you cannot play for pride and purpose, why even bother to put the uniform on? Okay, so 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 now my question is: So do you feel like that's the, this uh, new millennium of football and this new generation that's playing today's game? What about it? What do I feel about it? Well, I'm saying, so would you is that who the, uh, that is, is who you uh, put the blame on in terms of you know the pride and the purpose, as you stated before, uh, in in past years, you know when the team went out there this. Teams obviously, and as you say, is not is used to not winning championships for a long period of time, but they still play with pride and purpose. But as you stated today, you did not see that. So my question is: Is that do you feel this new generation, this new millennium of football, is headed? Let, let me ask you this question, Andre. Let me ask you this question. Am I, am I, does it sound like I'm fussing mm-hmm. tonight? No, 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 no. No. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. If I tell you September 26, 1998, what comes to your mind? September 26, 1998. September 26, 1998. Do I need to say that again? Uh, September 26, 1998. Does that date ring a bell to you at all? Other than the fact that I was two at the time, going on three. <laughs> Bless him heart. <laughs> other than, other than the fact that September twenty sixth yeah. September twenty sixth, nineteen ninety-eight was the end of the losing streak. For Prairie View Football. For Prairie View A and M University football. The opponent was Langston on the beautiful campus of Prairie View A&M University at the Old Blackshire Stadium. This team had lost 80 consecutive games, probably an NCAA record that will never be broken because nowadays, instead of them earning their win, they'll schedule some type of patsy team they can get their win by. I said, at least we didn't do what Prairie View did, but that's fine too. But what I'm saying, pride and purpose. Pride and purpose. Dre, I want you to understand something. On an average of 10 games per year to have an 80-game losing streak. 
means that from 1990 until September 26, 1998, you lost every football game you've ever competed in. No excuses, no feeling sorry for. It was, it, it was what it was. No fancy facilities, no cute uniforms, but they played with pride and purpose. If you were happy to get 20 players with the same type of shoes, you was thankful for that, let alone everybody being uniform. And there's so much emphasis now on playing in the latest and the greatest scheme of uniform and color selections you can make. The, 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 the stadium, I get the stadium, you know, people want to come. And it, but you put, a stadium is not going to win you a football game. A uniform is not going to make you play no more harder. A uh, 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 um, a different alternating helmets are not going to make you run faster. You got to have some pride. You got to have some purpose, man. Right. Right. I agree. I know I agree. it sounds like we lost tonight. But for those who said, man, I thought PZ won. Third, you did win. You all listened to the after party. We just talking, you know, because you can only dress this thing up so much. Right. You can you can only dilly dally so much. Yes, Prairie View gets their win, um, uh, and just about that that win now will make them three and three in conference play. Right? Yes, three and three in conference play. So you've got an opportunity now to win against Texas Southern, which can at least guarantee you a winning. Uh, conference record. So the 25th is our Super Bowl. But here's something that is even more interesting. You laughing at me, Dre? I'm sorry, what was that? I said, were well, you laughing at me, Dre? No, not at all. Oh, okay. I thought I heard you snickering over there. Go ahead. <laughs> I am. Yeah, you are, la- you are laughing at me, Dre. <laughs> On this week coming up, we got a short week to play against Incarnate Word at their place. Right. It's Thursday night. Do you know how critical this game could be or is? Do you know how critical this game? What's the significance on why is this game even more meaningful and critical? Do you know what that is, what it is, Andre? Do you know why that is? Uh, go ahead. This why is, that? is what I call the pendulum game. This incarnate word game, if you win, could position you when you play against Texas Southern of having a winning season. If you win this game, you come into Texas Southern five and five on the year. Doesn't that seem like some pride and purpose is on the line? It does. You got now do you see why I'm focusing on the thirty one penalties? Yeah, I see. I see. Because if you don't have the discipline now to see the handwriting on the wall about what's really at stake right here, especially to my seniors. You got a chance to walk out of this thing if you're a senior with three consecutive winning seasons. That ought to be enough pride to motivate you. Well, you know, by it being a senior night tonight, I feel like it would be enough pride to motivate them tonight. <laughs> well, it, the, it, it was almost it was almost <clears throat> sitting in a practice session as far as the attendance goes. I'm still waiting for the official 
numbers of what they want to say was there. Um, and I'm going to try to look that up here momentarily if, if they even reported it. But that alone, brother, that alone was Andre. Yes, sir. Is I'm saying it's disappointing too hard. Dre, you're not paying attention to me tonight. I feel like we, I feel like you're not your paying attention out. to me. Your My mic, mic went out. out. Yeah. For like five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Drake, go ahead, man. I'm about to look something up. Give me your fee. I've been doing all the talk. I've been doing all the talking tonight, Drake. You you letting the old yeah. man get it off his chest today, huh? Well, I, I see. It's usually you. It's usually you that be down. And, and I don't know why I'm feeling like I'm feeling. We won. Yeah, for real. That, that, that's what I'm trying to at the end of the day. You know, but I can tell that um, it's, for you, it's like it's how it's how brave you won, and your your message was, was coming was coming a lot deeper than just uh, than just the game itself. So that's why you know I just I just sat back and I just you know okay <laughs> I see you know this you know, your perspective is coming from a different angle uh, in terms of how uh, how they won today. So. Uh, but you, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, but you know, it made sense. You know, of course, you know, I wasn't there, so I really just, just from listening, you know, you hear one thing, but by you actually being there, you know, you're actually able to witness how they play and this demeanor in terms of the pride and everything like that. So that's, <laughs> so that's why I was pretty much listening because, oh, uh, I'm like, well, well, from what I heard, and you know, it sounded like everything was pretty good. Well, well, well. Tell me what you heard. Tell me what you heard. Tell me what you heard, Dre. Well, again, you can't because you can't really hear pride and 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 you know and everything like that. That's something that, in my opinion, I feel like by you witnessing it because you can look at the player's demeanor and you can look at you know uh, well minus the penalties. You know, you can hear that and everything like that. But you also look at the score and stuff like that. And then, well, okay, you know, they made up for it. But in terms of the pride and just their, you know, willingness to play for something, that's something that, in my opinion, you have to witness. You can There's only so much you can hear from that. And, you know, and, and that's my point. You know, if anybody was listening to this for the first time, I mean, man, Prince show is hard, but Prince is one of the biggest advocators, one of the biggest supporters, one of the, the, the biggest uh, ones that try to find the light at the end of the tunnel type guy. But I'm, I'm like – Man, this it's it's I'm witnessing this and it's like it's not feeling right. It's not feeling right. You know, this this was a game. Let me let me let me put it like this. You 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 felt like this team had something, even in the loss against Sam. You felt it. You witnessed, okay. Put a few things together, we might have something special. Okay. You felt that even with the two lesser opponents of Jackson State and Alabama State, you felt like, okay, they're turning the corner at the right time. Then you you go and you, 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 you go against Grambling, and you don't have, you have that 20, that 24 second quarter, 24 point second quarter meltdown. Okay, we'll we we we'll shake that off. We'll shake that off. You get the twenty one point second quarter meltdown against uh not southern but all corn. And then you have another ten point meltdown, ten point meltdown in the second quarter against Southern. And you're going like Where is it? What is it? Where's that? Ugh. And I and I kept looking, I said you're not playing with any pride. And you let the fact that, okay, no, you won't make it to the SWAC championship in Houston this year. No, you will not make it. But doggone it, dag, nabbit, play with some purpose anyhow. I'm looking yeah. at this thing. Okay, guys, I got two games left, and I could be remembered as a loser, or I could be remembered as a guy. And left winning. Now, one good note, 
The last time the hometown get to see you, you win. 35-12. Tip my hat to you. Thursday night, and I'll be on record for saying, Thursday night, because I was scared to death of today's game. I was really scared to death of today's game because I was like, I don't know which team's going to show up. Pine Bluff been playing people hard. They scored 40 points against uh, Southern. They played Grambling pretty tough. You know, I, I didn't know who was going to show up. But in corny word, I'm, 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 I'm going to try to pull up what they did today, if they did anything today. But in corny word is the the do-all-do game. They didn't give me no stats, by the way, neither of the uh, I don't – I can – if you ask me how many were there today, Dre, well, I'm going to get, let you guess, and then I'll let you see what I gauge from mine. What do you, I mean, you think was there today, Dre? Uh, let me go with 2,000. Nah. I, I can't say that, honestly. Not – not and be conscientious with myself. I can't say that. In corny word is playing. Oh Lord, they're playing Central Arkansas tonight. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the motivator for in corny word. I don't care who we lose to, we're not going to lose to a strike. We're not going to lose to Prairie View. We cannot do it. Our <laughs> sisters, our brothers in the South, when Nichols State has handled them, Sam Houston has handled them, I'll be John Brown if we're going to be the one that they get their signature win against this year. That's not going to happen. And if I'm Prairie View, if I'm Prairie View, Guys, this is our AFC championship, NFC championship this week. Next week against uh, Texas Southern, that's our Super Bowl. We win and we get to the Super Bowl. That's what. That's how I'm pitching this. I'm pitching it that way, and I got to have everything out of everybody. Everything out of everybody. Well, that's how I'm looking yeah. at this. Right? Yeah, yeah, and honestly, I'm glad that that's how you're looking at it. And the question is, are the players and the coaches looking at it? Because <laughs> you know? at the end of the day, we don't play anymore. We don't play the game. We, don't the game. we just talk about the game. So at the end of the day, I, I hope that you know the players and the coaches are the ones that uh, that's looking at that. And you know, I have all the confidence that uh, Coach Simmons is actually relaying the same exact message that you're saying here uh, to his players. Now, whether they reciprocate that or not, uh, whether they let it go in one ear and not the other, then, oh, yeah, rah, rah, rah. He say this all the time. <laughs> yeah, the 7F. Seven, the seven I get it, Coach Simmons, the 7F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or are they actually going to intake, you know, take in what he's saying and actually relay that out on the field and hopefully and let it represent on the scoreboard? That's the main thing. Right, right, right. Now, and on some positive note, Nico – had a pretty decent game on today, uh, even though uh, he threw uh, a couple of picks. Um, and, and at this stage, I can see Nico is trying to make plays. He's trying to make plays. Um, but, but a pretty uh, decent performance. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. All right, now you're good. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I said, I don't believe he was even sacked today. I don't believe, you know, but I could be wrong with that. I I, I don't think so. Um, I was just I was just looking for that. How bad do you want it? Do you, you know? I may have talked to you about boxing. I used to box a long time ago, Dre. And coach, coaches are trained to look into their fighter's eyes, even if he's in a battle, right? And he look in his eyes to see if this dude really, really, really wants to continue fighting, or is he just 
kind of going through the motion. You know, he's just out there to say, yeah, I box. You know, that is, you know, what what you're looking at. And if I was, if I was my manager tonight and, and TV was my prize fight, I'd have that white towel in my hand ready to toss that in if I see him take one more hit that I think could do some damage rather than see him get slaughtered. Right. And, and, and I, a sense of urgency. Maybe that's what I'm looking for, a sense of urgency. Like, guys, come on, let's do this. Let's well, you know, this. and you know, Mike, maybe that, uh, maybe that one win, is, that that win is what they needed. You know, maybe, and I know it, it may that may sound bad if it takes a win or to spark that urgency, but at the end of the day, you know, that it is what it is. So maybe it's this win tonight. You know, by it being, you know, it was senior night for him and everything like that, and you know, maybe this win tonight. Is what can is what possibly can spark that you know just that get up about them and you know and maybe we'll hopefully we can see that you know next week. Maybe maybe it's a, maybe it was this win tonight. Maybe right. every game in particular during your senior year is senior night. Every game. Well. That's I know true. I'm being I'm just, you know, I mean, Greg, that's true, but at the end of the day, it don't happen, Mike. It don't Greg, happen. Can you give Can you give me the MEAC scores, please, Dre? Can you do that for me? I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to get through this one, Dre. It's rough, man. Prairie View victorious, thirty-five to twelve. Now, this is the after party. It ain't no freaking party right about now, even though we won. But it's the after party. <laughs> Uh-huh. We normally say, well, we normally are saying they no after party once when Prairie View loses. They won a day, and it still ain't no after party. That's crazy, uh, man. Uh, the the, the crowd, Oh, back to the number. You said did you say two thousand? As my That's guess, it. yes. Dre, I'll go on record again. If there were two thousand people, if they were. I will get you the tallest glass I can find and pour your Pepsi in there so you can stick your pinky finger out. Oh, no, no, no. Your, your, your Pepsi bets are over, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you have ruined that. No more Pepsi bets for you, sir. <laughs> uh, Dre, I'm, I'm being very serious. Now, they had a couple of band, high school bands. So it was their Reagan High School band. They did a very good job. Um, and there was another uh, band right outside of Nacogdoches. They did a very good job. Counting those bands, the Marching Storm and the fan base, I'm going to say 1,700 times. 1,700 tops. Now, you this may, might be more than that. If you count both teams, both staffs, trainers, you might get close to 2,000. That's just me. I've been mm-hmm. wrong a few times in my life, but that's just my little gauge of meter. Well, you know, we had the conversation about uh, the fans showing up and uh, us giving our perspective on why they don't show up or they pick games to show up. Uh, We view both sides of it in terms of the fans, in terms of the coaches and the players and and everything like that. So, honestly, that's where I kind of just see it staying right now. At least least in my the fans are gonna have their reasons why they don't show up. The players and the coaches are gonna have their reasons why they feel like the fans should show up, regardless if they're producing wins or losses. Okay, and and, and what is your X factor? You said it was just well, too much to do. I'm sorry, what was that? You were saying it was just too much for you guys to do these days. Well, when you ask the question in terms of, uh the youth now, you know, this 
uh, this generation. And honestly, Mike, that that's the only thing, you know, that I can think of. Well, honestly, not even just that. I've actually have heard it uh, from some of my peers. And I asked him, and I've asked him, hey, man, you going to the game today? And their first question, their first response is, man, I'd rather go do X, Y, Z. You know, it don't even matter at this point what the X, Y, Z is. It's just the initial fact that they have an option, and they will rather act on that option because they have it versus going to the game. Okay, I, I guess, I guess. This is the after party. This is the after party where that man, Dre, and the radio guy, Dr. Mike Friend, has his win by the score of 35 to 12 over the Golden Lions of Arkansas Prime Bluff. Panthers' record will now improve to 4 and 5 overall. They are. Mm-hmm. Huh? Did you, you know what? Me at school, Mike? <laughs> yeah, you got them. You got them, Dre. Yeah, because I got them too. If you don't have them, yeah, you got them. Got it. Yeah. Go ahead, then. Give me what you got with a poke chat. Well, uh, Howard just got past Norfolk State by a score of twenty-eight to twenty-four. N C A and T had no problems getting past Savannah State, winning by a score of thirty-six to seventeen. And South Carolina State having no problems against Hampton, winning by a score of thirty-three to fifteen. Bethune Cookman beating NC Central by a score of 13 to 10, and the nail biter Delaware State beating Morgan State by a score of 33 to 30. Wow, Coach Kenneth Carter and the yes, Hawks get that get that win, man. You know he's featured here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Yes, so I'm sir. Sure he'll be excited. They got two wins this season. They were our MEAC School of the Year. Uh, not because of wins and losses, just a good guy, solid guy to talk X's and O's with. And when you talk to he and his players, they really playing with that pride and purpose, like I've been saying, and that sense of urgency. Where have you played the sense of urgency to, uh, too, Mike? <laughs> you got any more? They play, with the, they play with the urgency, Mike. You just blinked. Well, I must have took a nap. <laughs> you know, that was a heck of a, a heck of a blink. Yeah, it was a long, it was it, a long it, blink. Now, now I will give credit to where credit is due. The teams you're supposed to beat, they've beaten. You're supposed to beat Time Bluff today. You're supposed to beat them on paper, yeah. off paper, at home. You're supposed to win that game. Now that the game is over with, that's one game that you look on the schedule and you say, okay, I don't have a problem. We should win that game. When you first glance at the schedule for the first time, you're gauging. You know how you do. You gauge the records and say, okay, mm, we'll probably lose that one. We'll win that one. Okay, we'll go 8-3 and three on the year. You get what I'm saying? Right. But, and, the, and the score would indicate, the score would indicate, that, you know, hey, PV took care of business. But it didn't – the score didn't reflect what I saw on the field. Yeah, I I see. (laughs) It it didn't – it did not reflect what I saw on the field. The score would, would, would show pure dominance and pure control. And, you know, there, there were, like, I think two field goal attempts missed, 44 and 45 yarders by uh, the, the Golden Lions. And uh, there was this penalty after penalty after penalty. It was going like, there were, like, 38 seconds remaining in the contest. And I promise you it took, it seemed like 10 minutes to get rid of those 38 seconds. Well, you know, uh, leading up to this game, Mike, the one thing that we were normally questioning uh, was what was going to happen uh, this week. Cause, you know, as far as APB is concerned, you know, even though that their record really didn't show it uh, coming into this game, I believe uh, two and six or uh, two and seven. Yes, two and six, uh, two, and, two and seven. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But then talking about the teams that they actually put up uh, some effort into uh, the past couple of weeks, and then 
seeing what Prairie View's been doing uh, for the past two weekends, uh, well, minus uh, the win that they had against Pecan, but then the week before they're losing against Alcorn. So the the main question for us this week was just how they were uh, how they were going to play, you know, or even if honestly, at one point in time, we was even questioning as to whether or not uh, they were going to win the day. So you know, even though that don't take away from how they played today in terms of uh, the penalties and everything like that, I just know that leading up to this we was even questioning as to whether or not they were going to win. I know. I told you this game, this game scared me beyond normal jitters of a game. You know, I was like, man, these guys, I hope they're not so flat. You know, they jumped out, you know, 14 to th- uh, zero, and it was 14-3 at the end of the first quarter. And you, they were in control, but it was like you didn't really just – put them away. It's like you were just going through the motions. That's all that keeps coming to mind. You, There was not, I'm about to show you that I am the better team. I'm about to show you that I am the dominant team today. And I didn't see that, man. I didn't. I got to go, Jake, because I think I'm getting upset. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't go, man. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 stay, 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 stay. I, 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 man, you, 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 you spend, see, the reason I don't put so much emphasis on all this new stuff, this new stuff, you know, we got this and we got that, that's fine. But don't let that define who you are. Because when... You look at the stats and you look at the history of today because today was history. Whether you put forth an effort or not is going to indicate. And what's going, when you reflect back on this day in history, you'll look at the attendance. You'll look at the penalties. You'll look at time of possession. You'll look at things, and you can really, if you truly understand the stats, because what are stats? They're nothing but numbers that make up a story of the history that took place. But when you witness the history, it's different than someone who reads about it. Because guess what? Reading about the history is knowledge. But living and witnessing the history is experience. And that's what's missing, the experience of what it's like to be a champion. Even if I don't win a game, I can still be a champion because I never quit on myself. Because here come those words again. I play with pride and purpose. That's all I'm saying, Drake. Y'all give me a hard time, okay. that old man. But the old man does it for pride and purpose. That's what I do it for. If we're going to do it, let's do it right. If we're going to do it, let's do it with some pride. Let's do it with some purpose. That's all I'm looking for. I don't, Man, you know what, Dre? To be honest with you, I can live... With a six and five, seven and four team, and every now and then we go eight and three. As long as I'm seeing pride and purpose, because once again, going back to the facts, if you take away 2009, when was the last time for ever you won a football championship? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Forever. Okay, but it, it, it didn't take away the pride and the purpose. Right. Don't go and get a new pair of clothes, oh, Lord, and you don't wash your backside before you put them on. Well. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm I'm no Drake. Man, help me. Rescue me, Drake. Get me out of this, man. Get me out. Yeah, well, you know. I'm in a black place. I'm in a dark place right now. I figured, I, I, the only thing I could pull, man, is that I would think that maybe while you mentioned Nico earlier that that would kind of get you out of it, 
uh, him throwing for 400 yards, even though he had two touchdowns. I thought that that would get you out of it, but he kind of just got right back into it. I, you know, I don't know. And, and you know what? I'm tipping my hat to Nico. Nico has – see, let me mix the, the pride and purpose again, that pride and purpose. You bring in McCullers. McCullers is taunted and daunted. Hey, man, this dude here is the real deal. And Nico said, you know what? He might be your choice right now. But let him slip up. That's that pride. That purpose. Yeah, you can easily cash it in, even quit even. Man, I ain't putting up with this. I'm quitting. That don't prove anything. But if you plan with pride and purpose, pride and purpose, pride and purpose, when you get the opportunity to execute, guess what? You ain't getting it back. You will not get it back. And that's right. what I'm looking for. I could care I, I could care less about you losing. I could care less about you losing. I want to see you play with an effort. I want to experience that your 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 effort and your purpose is left out there on the field. I saw a bad product today from both sides. I saw a bad product. I saw two teams that looked like they were having losing seasons. And mind you, Brady's not even having a losing season on paper. Right. But I'm not concerned about a paper champ. Paper championships don't thrill me. Yeah. That's why I don't put too much emphasis on individual stats. Because you could have, you know, in Nico's case, not taking away, Nico had a fantastic game. Did I mention that? Yes, I did. Nico threw for 400 yards, but if you throw for 400 yards and you're getting beat like a baby seal about the head, Oh, that let me know that you racked up yards when it didn't matter. You can make the stats say and do anything. But that pride and that purpose, how did I execute when I got in the red zone? How did I do this and how did I do that? How did I finish my season? That's what I'm looking at. Even though you win today, let's not be satisfied with this win because there was a whole lot that needed correction. You don't look like a team that just played its eighth, ninth game of the season, not with 31 penalties being called. That does, that does, do you know how many, how many penalties 31? Do you know what the average penalties are per game? What's that? Seven. That means we shouldn't get in any other penalties called for the rest of the year, but we know that won't happen. Don't forget about that. That's all, you know. During next week or this week, I am going to look at it in corner quarter, seeing us down in the dumps in the south. I told you my spin on it. What should? What is your spin on this game coming up? So, well, you know, ultimately, you're really just going to have uh, both teams that's pretty much going to have the same mindset uh, going into the game. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, both teams are not, you know, where they want to be when they first set out uh, the season um, in September. So, at the end of the day, both teams are going to be coming in with the same mindset in terms of just finishing the season strong. I mean, that's the same message that everybody is giving teams that are the where they are right now, you know, if they not – if they don't have a winning season or anything like that. So I'm pretty sure the coaching staff and Corner Word is saying the same thing that Coach Simmons is telling the prayer of you in terms of uh, let's just finish out strong and let's just work towards uh, uh, next season. So both teams, in my opinion, is going to be coming in with that, uh, with that same uh, mentality. Like I said before, I know, as you mentioned, it shouldn't take a win or if you're a senior every day, you should play it like a senior night. And, 
There's no argument here in that perspective. There's no argument here. I just know that it wouldn't surprise me that this win tonight may be the win that they need to kind of get that spark, and it shouldn't take it. It shouldn't take this win. But just maybe, maybe it may be the win they need just to get this spark of, of leading into the next week. So I personally feel like both teams are going to come in with, with the same mentality. If Preview shows up the way we know they can show up, I shouldn't see them getting. Uh, I shouldn't see them having a hard time with the corner word. But we've been saying that all season long, and, and here we are. So <laughs> here we are, them, and just, there it is. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> well, Dre, are you going to be bold enough to protect now, or are you going to wait till later on throughout the rest of next week? Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. No, you know what? You know what? I'm. I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. I say. Uh, thirty-one fourteen Prairie View. Thirty-one fourteen. Thirty-one fourteen Prairie View. Thirty-one fourteen. Okay. Okay. Now, is that confidence in Prairie View or lack of confidence and respect for the important work? Both. Both. It's the confidence in Prairie View in terms of I know that they can put up those amount of points because we've seen it before, and I have no doubt that they can do it against a team like Incarnate Word, if in fact. See, it's always a prayer view. There's always that if factor. We never really talk about in terms, okay, do they got the players? Do they got the skills? Do they even have the system uh, in some cases to actually put up those amount of points to get a, uh, against a team? It's ne- That's never the issue. It's always the if, if they can go out and play a good game, if they can minimize the penalties, if, in fact, they didn't do that tonight. It's that if factor, unfortunately. So <laughs> here this week, if they can go out and not start off slow, if they don't have a bad second quarter, if they play four full quarters, they shouldn't have no – they should eat, They should put up 30-plus 30 30 plus points against this incarnate word football team. They should. Okay, then. <laughs> okay. I got you, 31-14, very good. I believe that Prairie View can win this game and will win this game. 31-14 is kind of strong. I'm thinking out loud that Prairie View will win something maybe 27, 24, 21, somewhere in that nature. I think it's going to be a very well-played game. And to believe it or not, to believe it or not, I believe in Corny Word, even though they're going to be up for the game, but I think they're going to be down at the same time, if that makes sense. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but I, I – yeah, man, it's in a lot of prairie view. We shouldn't have a problem with them. Boom, boom, boom. Low to speak and get knocked smooth out. And that's right. what I'm looking at. 31-14, I still think there are some things that need to be adjusted defensively on scoring, like collapses toward half and toward, you know, the scrap part of the game. You know, when people just, as you would say, start chopping the ball all over the field. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you know, you late in the game when it doesn't make sense. Huh? You all have never heard that phrase before, huh? I didn't say I've never heard it, but it's a southern swing, slang, saying for sure. Chunk. <laughs> Stop that chunking. Are you chunking that ball tonight, ladies and gentlemen? No. That's country. My brother and I, I'll tell you a story. We're going to wrap this thing up. We were visiting some, our family, uh, cousins in Memphis, Tennessee. And my brother and I, we had some rocks. We were throwing, throwing the rocks across a lot or something of that nature. And my cousin said, hey, y'all stop that chunking. I don't know what you're talking about. We're throwing, we're throwing the rocks. And so he said, man, y'all better stop that chunking. Y'all going to hit something. And I said, man, ain't nobody chunking. What are you talking about? What is chunking? That's what you're doing right now. I said, you mean throwing? And I was saying, man, <laughs> chunking? Who says chunking? Now, Dre, I heard that the first time and maybe 
four other times in my life until I heard you say it here recently in my entire life, and I'm 50 years old. Chunking? Do you know how many games I have attended and broadcast and played in? And I've never heard anyone, okay, I'm going to run a post and you chunk it. Go 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, then chunk it. Chunk it. No. Chunk it. You have definitely let your your roots <laughs> pour out, your southern roots have poured out, and I'm not even mad at you, Dre. You know why? Because <laughs> you that man. <laughs> Tell them how they can find you on Twitter, Dre. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they can find me at that underscore man underscore Dre. I use a lot of underscores. I apologize for that. That <laughs> man, Dre, and all them underscores, y'all heard it. I am Twitter at Radio Guy. You got an Instagram handle too, huh, Dre? You don't have Instagram, do you? Hello? Uh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, I do. It's Mr. Andre Davis. All one word. Well, what happened to that man, Dre? Well, that switched it up a little. I mean, at, at, at Instagram. So it's Mr. Andre Davis. Yes, sir. Mr. Andre Davis. All lowercase. All one. All one okay. word. Okay. Is Mr. Spelled out or is it M R? M R. <laughs> okay. Hey, I mean, I just gotta get these classes, man. Yeah, Mr. I got you. M R A A N D R E D A V I S. All all together. Mr. Andre Davis, and I am Radio Guy 22 at Instagram. The website is OBN Radio, and don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, tell somebody about the after party. We've got two more of these, Dre. Thursday night is yes, a tricky do. night, man. Thursday night is usually when you do your thing, but you'll do your better do your thing on the outspoken, which can be heard right here. Do the open light broadcast network. Well, you do a fine job with that too, Drew. I want to let you know that too. You do a fine job. Oh, well, you know, I try. Yeah, I take out to your leadership. I try. <laughs> well, you know, flattery will get you places, Coach, so keep it up. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> No, but you can listen to uh, Brother Davis on Outspoken. Uh, very fine young man, soon to be PV graduate class of 2017 by way of Dallas, Texas area. Uh, he is, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, a Dallas Cowboy fan. Oh, Dre, I've been asking this this question. I think I may have asked you, but uh, I asked this, and if you guys want to respond to it, respond to it at Twitter at Radio Guy. Um, what? How would you rank Prairie View, or how would you, what team, what NFL team would you compare Prairie View to, and why? Uh, you already know what team I'm gonna say. Go ahead. You already you already know which team I'm gonna say. Go right but, here. Yes, sir, I will. So I rank preview similar to the star, my Dallas Cowboys. And the reason why I say that is because they remind me of Dallas in terms of not knowing what team you're gonna get. See Dallas is a very talented team on both sides of the ball. But when it comes to the star, you don't know what you're gonna get. You don't know who is gonna show up. We've been talking about that for years, and I feel the same way about Prairie View. Do they have talent? Yes. On both sides of the ball? Yes. But who is, they, like, who is going to show up? Are they going to do the little things right that's very important in the football game that's going to get them the victory? So I compare them to my Cowboys because it's on one week when they win, minus today in terms of the penalty, it's like, okay, Y'all won. Y'all did everything right. Did everything right. Y'all paid attention to details. Y'all answered the call, and you won. When you lost, when you lose it, and what what was that? Did were y'all sick? <laughs> What's the problem? So so that's always that fine line right there. So that's who I I, uh, I rate them as. Okay, okay, and you know what? For probably a rare occasion in life, I'm going to agree with you, but not based upon that. Mine's going to be a little short this week. You always have high hopes seem to come up short for whatever reason. And that's I just want to take care of the 1876 after party. He is Andre Davis. I am Mike Prince. Thank you all so much 
for joining. Thank you so much for your support and participation. Uh, it is an honor to be here. And we love her. We love us in person. But what we do love is our first amendment tonight. I want to say God bless. Good night. We'll see you on 